Hi, this is Carlos Reyes again from rcadvices.com. Um, this is a follow-up to the test flight of the uh, first prototype of the uh, Picaro uh, design, which is a uh, half, uh, half a pound flying wing. And here it is. And um, it didn't fly very well, just to recap. It, it was very tail heavy. Um, Otherwise, it, other, it, was, it was directionally stable and it was uh, good lateral stability. It was also very strong. Uh, the SPAR system held up really well. So I've been thinking a lot about how, how can I fix this issue. Uh, I don't think you know, moving the motor up to the, to the center is, is really going to be enough. I've really been going, you know, let, me, let me completely rethink this situation. And I put together a relatively fancy spreadsheet which I'm, got, which I'm posting for uh, doing the calculations on the flying wing and it actually, you get actually a, a lot of results but the key result is the, um, you know, where the CG needs to go. So in case you're working on your own flying wing you can use the spreadsheet but it also confirms my, my quick calculations about it being about seven inches back <clears throat> from the leading edge of you know where it needed to be and, and I just couldn't get it get it there so so I was thinking about it uh, I think part of the problem here was the very low aspect ratio and in fact very low aspect ratio wings they tend to have issues with with stability um, which is part of the reason why I picked the picket on thing because it's you know a pike fish um, so, but you know, but also very low aspect ratio wings tend to be uh, lower uh, efficiency. So anyway, so I thought, okay, what if I have a higher aspect ratio wing, but of course I need to have wing area behind the motor. I still want to, I mean, I could put the motor on the nose and that, would, that probably would have solved the problem with this one. But I'd rather not do that. I, you know, I'm trying to do something new. Uh, I haven't done too much with pusher configuration, so that's why I, I, I want to do this. And, and of course, it tends to be a lot more durable, you know, crash resistant. So, so, so if I have a wing where a lot of the wing area is behind uh, where the motor is, then that's going to help push the, the location of the center of gravity back. And that tells me, you know, I have a very high taper ratio, you know, meaning close to one meaning that the wing doesn't taper much. And I was thinking about it and thinking about it and I came up with this design. And this is uh, what you might call a crescent wing. And you know, it, it's, it's really quick and easy to build a prototype like this. You know, it's basically two pieces of foam. I fold it over uh, some aluminum foil, taped it to the end, taped it to the end. And, and then I ended up taping a couple of large paper clips to the nose here just to balance things out. And I just threw it around in the living room. You know, I used um, my glue stick. So it was, this was really quick. I mean, I, I probably built this, in, it built this in five minutes. Anyway, so the idea is that the motor would, would have gone here facing back. This is the nose. And this worked, this worked reasonably well. You know, I think it was uh, stable enough. Um, you know, no problem there. I, my, I have a couple of concerns with this shape. One is that it's, it will be a challenge to support the end here. That's one issue. Another issue is that it's hard cutting out this shape. Um, in fact, you know, even with this one, I had a hard time cutting it and, and I wasn't very accurate. So I didn't like that. You know, I want something that's repeatable, something that's not, that's not going, to, going to require a lot of practice. So, and also, I guess I thought it was a, a little bit boring. I mean, you know, it's an interesting shape. Uh, an idea that I, that I had that I was going to do was take one of my 8 inch, eight inch dowels and glue it to the leading edge. So, so since it curves and the dowels are flexible, I could, I could have used just one dowel for the whole leading edge. And I like that. And that, that, that would have given it a lot of strength. So I may come back at some point and pursue this idea further because I like the shape, it's nice looking. But I said, okay, let me let me try let me try another idea. So I went in a new direction and I came up with this. Now this is this is very state of the art. This is what's called a joint wing design. Because there's a there's a wing in the front, 
But there's, actually, there's another wing that meets that first one about three quarters or two thirds of the way out, okay? And the, the, uh, the cord size here is a little bigger than that one, even though they could both be the same. And, you know, it might be hard to see, but I, I also put, just like, just like this one, it's got, kind of, you know, this one has a support piece of foam here on the leading edge, for, not just support, but also to help give a little bit more of an airfoil. I did the same thing here. So this is two straight pieces of foam that were glued on also with a glue stick. Um, I, um, I did put some couple of large paper clips taped to the nose. I did round this out a little bit, but but actually before I made any of these modifications, I, I threw it around because I can just go to the living room, you know, grab it from the back and, and throw it. And um, it was very educational. Again, something like this in five minutes, you can make it. You know, single piece of foam, just cut it out, try it out. You know, there's nothing easier and, and it's just so educational. Oh, there's another feature here that I don't know if you recognized it, but this, this wing tips, this is what's called a raked wing tip. So uh, this, this design actually incorporates two very state-of-the-art features. Like there, there's been a, a lot of research in the last 10 years on joint wings, which is what this is, and raked wing tips. In fact, uh, all the latest airplanes from Boeing uh, feature a raked wing tip that, that, that looks very similar to this. Now, of course, you know, do I care about getting the ultimate in performance from an airplane like this? Probably not. But, you know, they, they definitely look neat. So I, I threw this around first without weight. I didn't fly so well. You know, then I added the foam. Then I sanded the foam. And what I did notice is that it wasn't very directionally stable. You know, sometimes it will go to the right. Sometimes it will go to the left. And again, when an airplane does that, that means it's the directional stability is not the best. So I added a rudder here, and, and actually right now this flies great. I mean the two uh, paper clips are a little bit heavy, so for the wing area it's a little bit loaded down, but it's rack, rack stable. Uh, and and these, are, yeah, these are 90 degree angle, so it's about a 45 degree uh, sweep on this one. But there's one big problem. Uh, and, and this, oh, and there's another feature of this one which I really like because this is basically half size and it's exactly uh, 15 inches wingtip to wingtip and it's 10 inches from nose to, to the back. So if you double the size of it, it'll fit exactly on a single piece of foam board, which is 20, you know, 20 by, by 30 or rather uh, 30, you know, by 20. So I really like that. The problem is that this this distance here is just about five inches so if i'm going to use an eight or nine inch propeller uh the motor cannot be here it has to, you know the propeller has to be here because that's basically the only place where it fits and that's a little bit of a tight fit i didn't i didn't like that it was a little bit too um you know then the motor has to be further back um and so then this uh, this all this whole part will have to be covered up somehow because the motor is going to be right here it didn't, it wasn't quite right, even though in a lot of ways, this design, I think, has a lot of promise also. And again, you know, I may come back, I may come back in the future and pursue it some more, you know, uh, you know, get it all debugged. So then, I, you know, so then I was thinking, okay, what are the problems? How can I simplify it? And I came up with this. And this is... It is in a lot of ways. This is a simplified version of that because it doesn't. It doesn't have. It's not a joint wing, and it doesn't have the rake tip. So I basically just cut this off. But instead of a forty-five degree angle, I I have a um, I guess a sixty degree angle, but it's really thirty. You know, the sweep is is thirty degrees. So what that did is that it opened up this area here. So, I, you know, with just a little bit of an extra support, the propeller will be able to fit uh, a, lot, a lot closer to the nose. So I think it's going to help me a lot with the balance. And, and it's a much simpler design than that one. I think it looks very neat still. And it's really strong. Uh, you know, these this big support areas at the end here are, are great. And, and also, you know, this might be hard to see, but actually the sweep here is higher than the sweep 
back here okay you know I know I know this is 30 degrees or so this is less I haven't measured it but it might be 25 or something like that so the point is that the net effect is that the airplane has positive sweep as opposed to this one where it's really much closer than it, you might realize to zero sweep because this one counteracts that one because the area of this one is bigger um, so so bottom line is, you know, and I also added a couple of big paper clips to the bottom and, and the support and I actually, oh, I guess I, I didn't run out the, the leading edge on this one. I thought I had. Um, so anyway, but I've been throwing this one around and it's pretty stable. You know, the, that other one wasn't stable without the rudder. This one seems to be doing okay. Uh, of course, it's got quite a bit of wing area, so it's, it's a nice floater. Um, you know, if I if I exactly double it in size, it'll fit on a single sheet of foam board. Very easy to build. You know, there are no no funny angles that I need to figure out. Um, so I may have a winner on my hands. You know, this might be the uh, prototype number two of Picadol. Of course, it, it won't look much like the other one. I and I don't know. I, I'm not sure where I'm gonna put the elevons. You know, the, I'm guessing they might just go here on the end. I don't know, I need to think about that. Uh, but the CG, at least on, on, on this model, it's uh it's it's like here, you know, so it's it's about it's about an inch in front of the uh, the center center point there. And that's okay, I, you know, that's relatively forward. Uh, this one the the uh, the cord is the same on both the front and the back, and I did that on purpose. To get some more wing area behind, so so you could. This is really kind of like a joint tandem wing airplane, uh, because the two wings are, are exactly the same size. The sweep on the front is a little bit more than the one in the back, uh, but otherwise it's you know real simple. I probably would add also support here, you know, to double this up, um, you know, and I'll and I I know I'll add the leading edge round dowel. What I don't know is, you know, what if I if I still need more support? I don't think I will, but if I do, I'm not sure. You know, I mean, I guess I could put a spar right through the middle here. I think it looked terrible. So that, or or I was oh I was thinking I could put a spar right in front of the motor. In fact, I think I think I might do that. Uh, right, you know, right in between the motor mount and the motor. So there's a little bit of a gap there, and I can I can put it in there. So I'll probably do that because it's going to help me get the weight forward anyway. So I think I have a winner. Uh, I'm still thinking about it. Um, but uh, next time you I talk about this, I, I may have built one of these full quotes, full size, you know, twice this size and, and mounted the electronics and see what happens. So till next time. Uh,